Good morning. It's Friday, December 3, and time for your Barbados Today morning news update. Education and health officials are continuing talks about the possible resumption of face-to-face classes early next year. During a press conference on Thursday, Chief Medical Officer, the Most Honorable Dr. Kenneth George, revealed that his officers are actively working to secure the start of in-person classes, and his ministry has already began the process of handing over schools used as quarantine facilities back to the Ministry of Education. As you are aware, we currently have only two school-based facilities that are operational as isolation centers. That is the Lestavon School, and I think that is Queen's College. And we are trying to wind down operations at Lestavon. Um, sorry, Queen's College has been wound down. We are trying to wind down the operations at Lestavon with a view then to seeing what are the, the potential areas that other schools may be involved. So the two schools that are operational at the moment are Lestavon and Blackman and Gollop. And we are working to, by a, a staggered approach and by a slow approach, make sure that those schools are returned to the Ministry of Education once the situation permits. Director of the COVID-19 Monitoring Unit, Ronald Chapman, explained that much of the decision-making regarding schools will depend heavily on how the country's virus situation progresses over the holiday season. We are hoping and we are working with the Ministry of Education. We are looking at the possibility of reopening schools early next year and other issue, other things that, are, that we are working with. And this is important for the community. So we need to be able to hold it down for persons to follow the protocols, for persons to do what is right so that we can slowly and surely reopen the economy. Meanwhile, the Chief Medical Officer revealed on Thursday that headway is being made on Government Safe Zone Initiative with several health institutions supporting the move. As far as I'm aware, the teams are up and running and they are working towards making this a reality. Please recall that the safe zones, although they are up and running, it will take time for all the staff, etc., to be validated with the vaccines and to be tested. But I just would like to let you know that um, we have had full cooperation from the geriatric hospital, psychiatric hospital, QEH has done tremendous work, and um, the other area is the nursing homes and senior citizens' homes in the private sector. So they have been working quietly behind the scenes to make sure that this policy directive comes to fruition. In other news this Wednesday, Barbadian consumers may not have to dig deeper into their pockets to pay for meat this Christmas after all. That's because the price hike which livestock farmers were expecting to start paying for feed on Wednesday has been put on hold until a more long-term arrangement can be established. The move comes following the intervention of Agriculture Minister in Darwear. The reality of it is that um, I think the information that came up earlier was a bit premature in that um, we have been in conversation with the officers at Pinnacle and they have agreed to um, hold off on any increases until we can settle a couple of issues and determine where we are going in the future. <clears throat> We've looked at a number of things and they're currently being worked on the BAS in conjunction with my team at the ministry are looking at triggers that we can use in order to be able to provide long-term and sustainable support to the livestock industry. Minister Weir stressed that he's seeking a long-term solution to the problem. We are trying to work towards the six, possibly beyond, uh, to see what solutions we can come up with that will have a long-term fix rather than short-term solutions that are not sustainable. There's regional and international news after this short break. I'll admit, when the COVID-19 vaccines were first introduced, I was a bit skeptical. I wondered, how did they create these vaccines so quickly? I heard so many theories and was suffocated by all the noise. 
But once I did my own research and began speaking to my friends in the field, I got the facts and decided to take the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. I am now proud to say that I'm fully vaccinated. I am one who believes in choice, but I also know that with each choice comes consequences. COVID-19 vaccines have been proven to provide a layer of protection against COVID-19. We have been in this situation for far too long now. It is time to get our lives back. We still need to social distance, wash our hands and mask up, but having an extra layer of protection with the COVID-19 vaccines, we should feel more happy that we're protecting ourselves, our family and friends, our colleagues and our clients. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. Regional News Antigua and Barbuda revises its travel protocols in light of the emerging Omicron variant. We get the details from EBS Television. Scientists say Omicron has several mutations which could make it more transmissible than other COVID variants. They also fear it may somewhat escape immunity from previous infection or vaccination. Considering the threat, Information Minister the Honorable Manfred Nicholas says Cabinet is treading cautiously. As of the if of this month, uh, we will permit only vaccinated persons with a PCR test not later than four days old. So we have removed, at this particular point in time, the ability for persons to come to Antigua with an antigen test. Meanwhile, the minister says the government will monitor the global situation to determine whether to move forward with plans to lift the state of emergency this month. The parliament will meet on the 50th and will make a determination regarding the um, early termination of the state of emergency. Again, that is going to be the outcome of that and the determination of that is going to be determined um, as to what happens globally over the next uh, coming days between now and the 15th. On the international scene, Germany's military saluted a visibly move Angela Merkel during a ceremonial farewell just a week before she's due to bout of politics after 16 years in office. Marching to the beat of her own tune, in typical Angela Merkel fashion, the outgoing chancellor set her farewell to the 70s punk song titled You Forgot the Color Film by East German singer Nina Hagen. It's a throwback to Merkel's teenage years growing up in communist-era Germany. The song was a highlight of my youth. The song also came from East Germany, and coincidentally, it is still played in a region that used to be my constituency, so everything fits. The farewell ceremony takes place at night in Berlin headquarters of the Ministry of Defense. Soldiers typically march in full uniform and perform music pieces selected by the outgoing honoree. Merkel will be succeeded at the chancellery by Olaf Scholz, a member of the Social Democratic Party. She will serve as interim chancellor until Scholz announces a new government by mid-December. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.